Welcome to your trial of Log Me and Rescue, a best of breed support solution designed and built to bring the technician a world class experience. During this video, you will learn how to do a few different things, including how to create and set permissions for additional technicians, how to set up a calling card, how to create a survey, how to run reports, and more. Now that you are in the Log Me and Rescue Administration Center, you might be wondering, what can I do here? You can use the Admin Center to configure Log Me and Rescue to reflect any support organization, from a team of one to large teams of support technicians with different responsibilities and capabilities. The intuitive online interface is used by administrators to create and assign permissions for other administrators and technician groups, create support channels, configure the rescue calling card and other connection methods, and much more. So let's go ahead and get started. Additional technician groups allow rescue to expand and change with your business needs. It also allows you to have different permissions depending on the level of technicians. This will give both you and your end users a greater level of comfort and security. Let's go ahead and set up a new group by going over to where it says Technicians and clicking where it says Create Technician Group. Now I'm going to name the group Second Tier, and if we scroll down a bit we can set the permissions for this group. Let's go ahead and allow them to deploy the calling card and run embedded scripts. Please note that anytime you make changes, it is important to click Save Changes. You can move a tech between groups simply by dropping and dragging the tech from one group to the next. Let's do this now with the tech I currently have in the technician group. It is important to note that when moving a tech from group to group, they automatically inherit the permissions of that group. Creating a technician is just as easy as creating a group. Technicians can be added, deleted, and moved as needed. With multiple techs, sessions can be transferred between them, or they can even collaborate on the same session at the same time. The first step to creating a tech is clicking on the group that you want the tech to be in. For now, I'm going to create a new second tier tech so they have all the permissions we previously set up. Now I'm going to click on the link for Create Technician. Let's go ahead and fill out a name, an email address, and create a password for them. A note I would like to add here is once the tech logs in, they can change the password. Next, I need to both enable the tech and save the changes. As you scroll down, you will notice that the permissions are set based on that group. If you want to make any changes, you need to either make it at the group level or place them into a different group. Lastly, if you want this tech to be a mobile tech, allowing them to support mobile devices such as phones and tablets, it is important to go back and check under Licenses, Mobile, and again, save your changes. A channel is one of many ways a remote connection can be made. Depending on your business, you could have different customers or products you want to support with different people. A channel is a link placed on a website that directs these different customers looking for support directly to the team supporting them. Let's go ahead and create a channel for the second tier group by clicking on the group, then the tab labeled Channels. Now place a check in the box next to Channel 02. If we click on the link for Channel 02, we can customize it as well as get the code needed to place this on the website. I'm going to change the name to Cubby Support and I'm going to click the Copy Link to Clipboard under Channel Link. You can now simply paste this URL onto your web page and users would simply click it to connect to the technicians in that group. As always, make sure you click Save Changes. There are many different ways to make the software reflect your company's look and brand. This drives up brand recognition and awareness. One of the quickest and easiest is to upload your logo into the Rescue Applet and icon on the product. Again, select the second tier tech group by clicking on that group. In the Settings tab, scroll down a bit to the Customer Applet Private Sessions. First, we can upload a logo and second the icon. Make sure your images meet the requirements. After both are, up are uploaded, go ahead and click Save Changes.
Since we are already under the Settings tab, we should move a little lower on the page and take a look at the Customer Survey. The survey is a great way to gather feedback and info from the people you have been connecting to and helping. Later we will explain how to run the reports and view this feedback. Under the Customer Survey section, we first need to turn this feature on. This can be done by clicking the Rescue Customer Survey. Now you can enable or disable as many questions as you would like. I'm going to use the three that are already enabled. By clicking Edit next to the first question, we can change this to a completely different question or change it from drop down to open answers. I'm happy with these questions, so I'm just going to go to the bottom and click Save Changes. The calling card is the quickest and easiest way for your customers to connect to technicians, as well as drive business back to you. Also, it's the most customizable feature we offer. It can be either pre-deployed or left behind at the end of a rescue session. Once on someone's computer, connection to a technician can be made by simply double-clicking on the icon, and then the user will show up in the queue as waiting for assistance. Select the group you wish to set this up for, and then click on the calling card tab. Let's take a few seconds to look at the settings. In here is really where you're going to make the calling card look like your calling card. You can change just about everything from the colors and background template to the logo and icon. For now, I will just change the name to Log Me In Cubby Support. Now I want to click on the Channels tab, and in this case, I'm going to pick Channel 03 and assign this to the second tier. Next, I want to open up Channel 03 and change the name to Cubby Calling Card and click Save Changes. Now we need to go back into this channel and at the very bottom in the Installer Name field, enter Cubby Support and click Generate. If we go back into the Cubby Calling Card channel and go to the bottom, you will find a section labeled Referral ID. Go ahead and, and copy this referral ID and jump to the tab for Organizations. At the very bottom, you will have a spot to enter it. So paste this referral ID in the spot that says Install a Referral ID and click Save Changes. After spending some time with the software, you might want to see how much is being used or how the survey results are looking. This can be very easily done with a built-in reporting tool. The reports are directly tied to the technicians as a whole, a tech group, or a certain technician simply by clicking on what you want to run the report on. In this case, I'm going to select the second tier group and then the reports from the top tab. The first report I want to run is a survey report. I'm going to check current week and I want this report in Excel format. I then click Get Report. The second report I want to run is the sessions report for the current month, but I'll take this report in HTML format. Thank you again for taking a trial of Log Me and Rescue, a best of breed support solution designed and built to bring the technician a world class experience.